Hello everybody, welcome to uh, Diego Knows, I'm Diego, and today we're going to talk about what else? Sex in the City, the original show, the one from the late 90s and the early 2000s, back when the show was good. I'm Diego, and I've watched every single episode of Sex in the City, and both movies, and that piece of shit, uh, and just like crap show that was that that we were subjected to recently. Uh, that's over with now, thank God. Uh, no, I want to talk about the episodes that were back when the show was good, okay? Back when they had some some drama in there, you know, some great characterizations. And some and some good insights on dating, you know, what dating was like back then from a woman's point of view, you know? That's what I really w attracted me about the show, is I know about dating from a guy's point of view, but from a woman's point of view, no, not, not so much, you know? I mean, the stuff that girls talk about, every once in a while I'd hear about it or something, but, you know, I didn't, you know, I kind of felt like I'm a guy, and I'm listening in on a bunch of girls talking. Like, what are the shit the girls talk about? You know, when guys aren't around. You know, this is the shit they talk about, okay? <laughs> so, it's interesting. It really is, you know? Uh, so, uh, so that's kind of what got me hooked on it. You know, I was single back then. You know, I was dating. I was younger. You know, I, I lived in a big city. I lived in Chicago. You know, and this was a show that all the girls I knew, all, all the pretty girls that I knew, were watching this show. They were always talking about this show, okay? And... You know, dating is something that's universal. I mean, guys and girls are interested in dating, you know? It's not just like a girl thing or a guy thing, you know? So uh, I, I couldn't understand why, why there weren't any other guys like me that were watching this show. I mean, my guy friends, they, they watched a couple of episodes, like when their girl with their girlfriends or something, but they didn't watch every episode. They didn't follow the storylines or or know who what character that was or this character or any of that. They didn't follow any of that stuff, okay? So, uh... So they knew about the show and their girlfriends all watched it, but they didn't actually know about the show, you know. They knew what it was about, but they didn't know any of the characters or who they're dating or the significance of this or that or any of that stuff. But I did because I watched every show faithfully. Uh, I love the show. Uh, my biggest problem with the show, like I say every episode, is that I didn't like the way they were portraying the straight men. The straight men were getting the short end of the stink, in my opinion. You know, they, they were always being portrayed as, as narcissistic or stupid. Uh, as acting completely out of character. I mean, a lot of these guys that these women are dating are professionals. Okay, that means they went to school. They graduated a university. They got a degree in something. They're, they're working professionals in New York, but yet they act like babies. You know, they act like toddlers sometimes. You know, they lose their temper over stupid stuff. And they just go with it. And we're just supposed to, like, like huh? Like, wh why would this, like, Ivy League educated professional all of a sudden blow up like a little kid? over something stupid this makes no sense you know but that would happen every episode well pretty much every episode you know so i just like like this is not the way straight guys act straight guys don't act this way you know so uh so that, that was my biggest problem and that's why i created this show you know it's because i wanted to give you the viewer i wanted to give you an honest opinion from a straight man about what i thought about the show and what i thought about the people on the show and how a straight guy would react to these situations because unfortunately our voice was not being represented on the show you know, so as far as diversity goes, I know the show was groundbreaking. It was talking about sex for a bunch of middle-aged women, you know, um, you know, being single and having no kids, you know, uh, and just going out there and having sex with all these, all these people, you know, I, I know that was like groundbreaking at the time, you know, that was like, oh my God, a show by, because most women this age would be married or divorced or, have, or be single moms or, or whatever, you know, but that wasn't happening on this show, you know? These were all single women in their 30s that, you know, had no kids. They're out there, you know, getting theirs, you know, which is it's fun. You know, it's definitely entertaining to watch this stuff, you know. Um, so I wanted to see what that was like. I wanted to see what, what the, the things that they were going through. But uh, I did notice that, you know, my voice wasn't being in there. Okay, the show was written by Candace Bushel. Okay, who was basically writing about her own experiences. Okay, in New York, being a single woman in New York. You know, uh, she's still a single woman, by the way, at this age, at her age now. And she still, she lives alone. Um... Uh, she never did settle down, uh, and she never did have kids. Um, but, um, you know, what they're going through and, and what the guys are going through, okay? The, the straight man was not being represented, okay? We had the shows being written by feminists, lesbians, and gay guys, you know? So, like, like our voice wasn't in there, you know? I'm sure there was a straight guy involved in greenlighting this show for HBO, but, but we weren't involved in the writing, of the characters, I don't think, you know, I really don't think we were, you know, because what I saw here, these men that these women were going out with were not real men, they were caricatures of men, they were what somebody thinks uh, a, a straight man is like, you know, not so much what a straight man is like, okay, because I can tell you from my own experience, okay, the guys on the show, these are not real men, real men do not act this way, you know, at least I, most real men don't act this way, okay, so moving right along, uh, this episode that we're going to talk about today is uh, season two, episode 14. It's called The Fuck Buddy. Yes, it's called The Fuck Buddy. That's actually a title of an episode. Hey, this is HBO. This wasn't regular TV, okay? So, yeah, season two, episode 14, The Fuck Buddy. 
All right, so we got a couple of callbacks here. Number one, Skipper. Skipper is back. Remember that guy? I loved him so much in season one. You know, that true, uh, that true uh, patron of, of male uh, masculinity, right? Yeah, no, 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 no. He's back. And what is he doing? Of course, what is he always doing? He's complaining about women. <laughs> Why do these girls keep breaking my heart all the time? I'm honest and I'm loving and I'm caring. What's wrong with me, Carrie? How come these girls always know exactly when to break up with me? When am I ever going to find love? Because you're a pussy, that's why. Okay, that's why. Because you're not a fucking man. Because these women want to be with a man, and you're not a fucking man. Okay, you're a caricature of a man. All right? Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, we all know guys like Skipper. Okay, I know plenty of guys like Skipper, okay? Christ, I'm a comic book nerd for Christ's sake, okay? <laughs> Half of my comic book friend readers are skippers, okay? I know skippers. Oh my God, you know, I just, you know, I feel bad for them. These, these, these are guys that just didn't have any male role models growing up, you know? They didn't have anyone there to, to, to kind of like guide their hand to navigate what it's like being a man, you know, growing up to become a man. They didn't really have that. They didn't have that Mr. Miyagi, you know? They didn't have that, that Rocky Balboa. They didn't have that, um, that John Wayne uh, archetype. You know, that boys had like back in the 50s, you know, you know, the Clint Eastwood, you know, the, the Paul Newman, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the male role models, you know, in my life for me growing up, you know, I had three guys, I had three dads. Okay. The way I look at it. Okay. I had Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis. These were my three dads. Okay. These were the guys that taught me about I me. Mean, I, I used to watch their movies and I would look, think to myself, Hey, you know, that's what I want to be like when I grow up, I want to be like them. Okay, I want to be like them. I want to act like them. I want to have a life like them, you know? Now, I know it's all bullshit, you know, but it's the way a little kid thinks, okay? I don't think Skipper had that. I think Skipper probably was raised by a single mom who coddled him, you know, who told him how great and special and important he was every day. And then when he got left off into the real world, he realized that he wasn't so much, you know? He did everything right. I paid for the date. I brought her flowers. I told her she was beautiful. Why doesn't she feel the same way about me? Well, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, I'll tell you why. Because you don't know how to be a man. No one ever taught you how to be a man. No one ever taught you how to deal with the rejection. No one ever taught you how to, you know, go out there and navigate the dating world from a man's point of view, not from a girl's point of view. Okay? If you take all your cues from chick flicks, you're going to fail. You are going to fail. Don't ever use chick flicks as a way to try to pick up women. You will fail every single time. I know. I tried it. It doesn't work. Okay? <laughs> okay, but moving right along. So he's complaining to Carrie, okay, and uh, you know he's talking about. He basically gives a scenario. We see several different women breaking up with Skipper over and over again, and they're all saying the exact same thing, okay? They dump him for being too nice. You know, I need more time alone. Uh, in my career, I'm, I'm really involved in my career right now. That's what I'm focusing on. You know, I, I don't think I have anything that I can give you. You know, I don't have anything left to give you. <laughs> you know, all, the, all the bullshit, politically correct stuff that girls tell you when they're really screwing somebody else and they want to they want to hang out with him more than you. So, so it's time for you to go. You know, that's the kind of stuff they're saying. You know, well, they, they try to say it without hurting your feelings. But, but it's, it's true. Hey, it's true. I've been on the receiving end of it. I know it's it's true. It's fucking true. You know, if you're not if you're not gonna if you're dating somebody and you're gonna be wishy washy and let her lead the relationship and let her make all the big decisions, you know, then you're not really fulfilling your role. Now we can talk about equality all you want, okay? And I'm all about equality. I believe men and women should have the same rights, okay? But the difference is that when it comes to dating, we don't we don't necessarily treat each other the same, okay? Men are, by, you know, by instinct, supposed to lead the relationship. That doesn't mean boss the lady around, but it means that you got to plan the date, you know? You got to plan how to pay for it. You got to plan, you know, the experience that she's going to have. That's your role as a man, okay? Women have to receive it. Okay, that's their role as a woman. Now, we can flip-flop and all that kind of stuff, and there's exceptions to every rule, okay? But I'm talking about biology. I'm talking about it in our DNA, our, our nature, and our instincts are to be that way, you know? But, uh, you know, if you're not providing that, where is she going to, you know, uh, uh, women, you know, female, you know, uh, feminine needs masculine to go with it. We need each other, okay? Men and women need each other for that specific reason, okay? And it's not just to, to repopulate the world, okay? Because that's how we complement each other, okay? I provide the masculinity, you provide the femininity, you know? One is not more important than the other. We are equal. We are equal, okay? But both sides are important. And if one person's not provided, the other one's gonna have to provide it, or else the relationship is not gonna be fulfilling. There's gonna be a black hole in there somewhere, you know? You don't want that in a relationship. Skipper doesn't know how to be a man. 
That's his problem. He doesn't know how to be a man. Okay, so then women want to be, even on a subconscious level, they might not even be aware of it. You know, they want to be with a man. You know, your typical straight woman, feminine woman wants to be with a man. You know, fuck all this shit, the feminist bullshit that you keep hearing, you're a boss bitch, and you can leave the relationship, and you can do everything, and blah, blah, blah. You know, no, fuck that shit, it doesn't work in real life. Okay, the guy's either going to submit to you, which is extremely unattractive, or, or a guy with self-esteem is going to fucking leave your ass, and you're going to end up fucking alone. Okay, <laughs> that's the reality. But okay, well, what do I know? What do I know? Okay, so moving right along, Carrie says like, well, you know, he's, he's always attracted to women that fall for jerks. Well, that's just basically just what I said, not necessarily jerks. But men that know what they want in life and go for it, you know, and they're not going to be deterred, you know, um, that's the kind of a guy with purpose, you know, a guy, a guy who knows what he wants and goes for it, you know, and is willing to put in the work to get there. Okay. That's what's more attractive than a guy who's just wishy-washy. Oh, maybe she'll go out with me. Maybe she won't. Do you like this? Cause if not, I can get you this or, or maybe we can go do this. Okay. Whatever you want, precious. What do you want? My sweetness, whatever you would like. It's all, it's all yours. Whatever you like, you know, no, no girl, no girl wants to date. No, no guy wants to date someone like that either. You know? It's just, it's, it's not attractive, all right? And of course, that's what he is. That's what Skipper is, you know? And unfortunately, you know, if you watch a lot of TV shows today, you know, or, or you know, or even movies today, I mean, that, that's basically, it's full of Skippers. That's all you got anymore. Everyone's afraid to have a man on a fucking show now, okay? Because for politically correct reasons, everyone's a fucking Skipper now. Like, what the fuck happened? Ah! Okay, anyway, so moving right along, Miranda started dating some guy named Kevin. I guess he's a lawyer like her, so they have that in common. But he's a big asshole. They're walking out of some sh movie they saw, and he's just complaining about this and that. He knows a lot about movies. Like, he compares Orson Welles and Citizen Kane. That's shit that I know about. Like, I'm a big old movie buff. And he starts complaining about, oh, this, and the people behind us were talking. Oh, my God, this guy, this guy doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. This director doesn't know how to fucking direct fucking traffic, much less a fucking movie. Blah, you know? And Miranda's like, well, yeah, well, that one actress is good. That actress doesn't know fucking shit from Shinola. That actress is a fucking stupid actor, a piece of shit. You know, so he's just basically arguing everything. Miranda's getting pissed off, and, and rightfully so. She's like, I'm just going to get a cab. He's like, no, you're not going to get a cab facing that side. you got to get on this side of the street. She goes, I know how to get a cab. Like, no, you won't get the cab. And then he gets the cab. So she's like, fuck. You know, so he was right about that. So, you know, but anyway, he's, he's very argumentative. However, uh, when they're alone at her apartment, I don't know if it's her, her apartment or his apartment, he takes control of the situation. Now, here's an example of, of a man. This guy is acting like a man. Not a good man. Not a good man, but he's acting like a man. He's authoritative. He knows what he wants. He loves to bark orders. He's a very bossy man. He's not, he's not afraid of offending anybody. He's offending everybody. He doesn't give a shit. Okay, this guy's like a Tony Soprano. He doesn't give a shit about who he offends. You know, he's just being himself. You know, kind of like me. But I'm not as bad as him, all right? I am aware of what I'm doing. You know, uh, this guy is just like, he's just spouting out orders, spouting out authority. You know, he's very, uh, very dominant. He's a very dominant personality, which, you know, but he's ultra dominant. He's the opposite of Skipper. He's, he's overbearing. Okay, nobody wants to be around someone like that. Okay, I don't want to, I, I know drill instructors like that, okay, when I was in the Marine Corps. Okay, I've worked for guys like this before, okay? I know, okay, I know what it's like to be around them. They're not very pleasant, okay? <laughs> There's only so much that you can take before you're going to knock them out or something. Like, okay, I'm done with you, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm taking you out, you know? <laughs> Uh, but it, when, it, when it's like military, though, it's authoritative. Like you have to do what you're told, you know. Like you have to get yelled at and take it, you know. But not in the real world. In the real world, you can just walk away. But um, you know, so he's he's very much like that. He's got like a drill instructor from when I was in the Marines. And of course, it pisses off Miranda because Miranda's lightweight too. Okay, but when, I guess when it comes to sex, he takes charge. Like he ta he tells her what to do. He's like a Christian Grey. Like no, lift your hands up right now. Now grab my bass. Grab my hair. Kiss me right here. Now, do it now, you know, like that. He's very, very, you know, very authoritative, you know, very, you know, you know, and which Miranda gets turned on by that. And, and you know what? Honestly, most women do get turned on, okay? When you take charge of the bedroom, when you've got a plan in the bedroom, the date ain't over yet. You got a plan in the bedroom too. Women like that. Guys that are watching this, yeah, have a plan. Have a plan in the bedroom. How's this going to go, okay? Kind of like, kind of like direct it in your imagination first before you, you bring her there, okay? Have a plan in the bedroom. All right, women like that. They like that. Okay. All right. So moving right along, uh, Miranda, what I have in life, I have. Uh, so so Miranda, of course, she she complains to her girlfriends about it, you know, because uh, he's aggressive and authoritative, and he orders her around when they're having sex, and she likes it, you know. But Miranda's like, what I hate in life, I love in sex. Okay, so I hate being bossed around in my regular life, but when when we're when we're doing it, I like I like being, you know. You know, I, I like being uh, told what to do in the bedroom, you know? I like being dominated in the bedroom, you know? 
I don't believe in dominating in the bedroom, uh, but you definitely got to be the one leading the dance, okay? It's like, like in dancing, the man leads. You got to lead, lead in the bedroom too, okay? You can't let her do it. You can't, because, you know, she's, you know, she's expecting you to know where to go, you know? So you got to kind of like orchestrate the whole thing. Hey, that's part of being a man, okay? We can talk about equality all we want, all right? <laughs> but the truth is, okay, most women would rather the guy lead, lead the experience than, than the girl. You know, feminism goes out the window when it comes to shit like this. It's like that war in Ukraine right now, you know? All the feminists that got left behind, you know what they're doing right now? They ran straight to the fucking kitchen, they're washing dishes and making sandwiches, okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> Once the shit hits the fan, where are the men? Uh-oh! We've turned all the men into fucking skippers and they're hiding behind us! Ah! You know, exactly, okay? See, there comes a time when you need men to actually show up, okay? In, in our culture here, in our Western society here in the United States, we're trying to get rid of that. It's all toxic masculinity. You know, it's like, come on, you know, there's a reason men exist. All right. Men that act like men. Okay. And it's not just to procreate either. All right. So, um, Carrie's like, uh, you like, you like angry guys. And Miranda's like, Skipper wasn't angry. Skipper wasn't angry. She's like, yeah. And you dumped him. Exactly. That's what, that's her point. And Samantha says, I'm random. Uh, I don't have, and I don't have a pattern, you know, you know, I, I'm not like mathematics. Okay. I, I'm a prime number. Yeah, you're a prime something, Samantha. Okay, they point out uh, Charlotte's pattern. So now they're talking about patterns. Okay, patterns in dating. You know, Charlotte's pattern is, you know, you wait for the perfect guy and then to ask you out on the perfect date. And then, uh, then you project this huge fantasy onto him <laughs> with enormous expectations, you know, which uh, blow up in your face. And then you, and you put all your deviled eggs in one basket. You know what? This doesn't sound like Charlotte. No, you know what it sounds like? Sounds like Carrie. Yeah, that sounds just like Carrie. Samantha says, uh, you need to date a few guys at the same time like I do. Juggle, multitask, spread it around a little more, you know? <laughs> then you won't be disappointed, you know? Don't fall for this one man pattern stuff. I mean, look what, you did that with Big and look what happened, you know? Hey. I see, I see Samantha's point of view, and I know she's trying to help out her friends here, but this, this is, you know, if, if these were young girls that all they wanted to do was get laid, you know, that's all they want to do is just fuck as so many guys as they can, which I guess, the, the, I guess they are doing that. But Carrie, Carrie actually wants a relationship, okay? She actually wants a relationship, okay? Otherwise, she wouldn't get upset when the guys that she sleeps with don't, don't care about her. Like last episode with Bon Jovi, you know, she was upset that he didn't give two shits about her after they had sex, okay? Samantha, if Samantha had been in that bed, she wouldn't have been upset. She'd been like, oh, you're just like me, you know? See, Carrie wants more than what Samantha wants, okay? So Samantha's giving her advice on how to be Samantha, okay? <laughs> Carrie's not Samantha. She doesn't want to be like Samantha, you see? So her advice is useless, okay? Carrie's like, um, big was an aberration, okay? Next time I meet a handsome, wealthy, emotionally unavailable 43-year-old, I'll know what to expect, okay? Now, this leads off to the thesis of the episode, which is called... Are we just dating the same person over and over again? Are we, you know, because I would put that in the category of type. Okay, all of us have a certain type of person. Now there's room to, to, to move around that. And I have dated outside of my type before. Okay, I've done it several times, several times, many times. I've dated outside of my type. But you know, in my mind, in my imagination, I have a particular type of person that I'm attracted to, you know, what they look like, you know, how they speak, how they move, you know. Um, what they're interested in, you know, we all have that. We all have that fam that phantom, that fantasy, you know, a uh, partner that we wish we could meet, you know. And so we, we tend to date people that meet those those characteristics, you know, o over and over again because that's what we're attracted to. We all have that. We all do, you know. Um, uh, so, um, you know, I, I keep thinking about Alyssa Milano, and she went through like a, a 15 years of her life where all she did was date baseball players. Okay, <laughs> well, why? Because that that's her like fantasy, baseball players. You know, not anymore. But, you know, uh, like for her, she went through a phase where that's just what she wanted, baseball players. Okay, so like, you know, we all kind of have that. You know, we all, we all kind of date the same person over and over again. You know, I know I, I have, you know. Uh, so now we're going to the POVs, you know, where you interview the people, you know. And uh, this one lady says, like, she dates artists. You know, so artists are all, they're all, you know, so I've dated many different artists, you know, uh, you know, but they all ended up being like, like philanderers, you know, and drug addicts, you know, but there is definitely a difference between the sculptors and the painters. So I wouldn't say they're all the same guy. Yeah, that kind of logic, right? Okay. Um, this one woman says, like, Han handsome, wealthy assholes who treat me like shit. 
That's her pattern. Oh, really? They treat you like shit, huh? That, that's her pattern. That's what turns her on. Uh, handsome, wealthy assholes that treat her like shit. Really? That's what turns her on? Really? I, I don't think so. Now, they might turn out to be handsome, wealthy assholes in the end, but that's not how they came across, or else you would never would have dated them, all right? So what does that say about you? You know, what would happen if you dated a nice guy? Exactly, nothing, because you wouldn't be attracted to him. So whose fault is it here? Okay, a kid says, like, I only date girls that have a Sony PlayStation. And tits. <laughs> this kid's like 13 or 12 or something. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Okay, now Samantha can't sleep because she hears her neighbors next door are having lots of sex. They're moaning, uh, uh, uh. And Samantha's alone. Why is Samantha alone in bed? That's like, oh, somebody call Ripley. But anyway, so she can't sleep because they're too loud having sex, all right? So what does she do? She does what everybody does. She beats it, okay? She pulls out her, her vibrator, you know, and just goes to town, you know, and starts joining in on the fun, you know, from, from remote, remote access, all right? And she starts making her own noises, I guess, to outdo them because uh, that's, that's the kind of person Samantha is. And I see it. I can see it. Meanwhile, Carrie calls John again. Now, if you remember John, he was in the first episode of Sex and the City. That was her fuck buddy. Remember? The one that she, she, like, she like has sex with him like every three years in between relationships. She always sleeps with the same guy. <laughs> this guy, John. Remember him? Okay. Well, uh, he's back. He came back. So, well, you know, Carrie's in between relationships. So what is she going to do? She's going to call John. Okay. And I remember John from the first episode. I actually liked him. I thought he was kind of a cool guy. We learned more about him in this episode. But he, he came back from the first season. So he's there again, and she's like, hey, you want to have dinner? He's like, uh, okay, yeah, sure, you know, because <laughs> he knows what that means. It doesn't mean dinner, okay? <laughs> oh, gosh, yes, yes. You know what? Um, the only thing I can say that's unrealistic about this situation, about the fuck buddy with, with, with John and uh, his name, yeah, John. Oh, yeah, his name is John. Anyway, uh, about John and Carrie, the only thing I can say about this is I, I've been in a similar situation, but these, these things don't last. Okay, you can only be somebody's fuck buddy for so long before one, one or the other is going to want more. Okay, that's, that's always how these things turn out. Okay, that's always how they turn out. Okay, every, every fuck buddy I've had, either I wanted something serious or she wanted something serious. Okay, it didn't last. Now, some lasted longer than others. I, I remember there's this one I can think about right now that was like a good maybe five or six years, you know, M maybe seven, maybe seven, you know, um, you know, but it, it got to the point like, hey, you know, I'm tired of doing this dance, you know. You know, every time, you know, in between relationships, I, I, I'm with you, you know, but like, you know, is there a reason for this? Because I'm in between relationships right now. And I think like if we're going to give it a shot, we need to do it now because I don't want to do this anymore. You know, and I'm like, no, I can't. So, you know, you know, so, well, that's the, that was the end of that. No more, no more FB situation, you know, and I can understand that because eventually one or the other is going to want more or neither one of you are going to want anything, you know. Now, yeah, both of them want to be together. Well, that, that's a fucking chick flick rom-com that nobody's going to believe, okay? If, if the fuck buddies decide that they fall in love with each other, that's some fucking, you know, Justin Timberlake fucking Natalie Portman bullshit there, okay? But no, no. Uh, in real life, that's usually what happens, okay? So I'm surprised that she's still seeing this guy, you know? I'm surprised that he's not seeing anybody else. I'm surprised that his calendar is so fucking available. Like, she says, like, hey, you want to meet dinner Saturday? Okay, hey, should we meet again? Let's meet again on Thursday night. He's like, okay, okay. And you know what? How about a Sunday morning, too? Okay, I see. This guy's like completely available. Doesn't sound like he's doing much banging. If he if his schedule's that free, I don't think he's dating very many people. Okay, or, or if anyone at all. Okay, because his schedule seems pretty pretty free. Now there is one scene where he says like I'll have to check my schedule, but I think I can make it. Yeah. Okay, which means he's not dating anybody. Okay, that's a that's a bad sign right there. Okay, if a guy's not dating anybody, okay, that's not good. That's not good. Okay, he needs to be having a, a constant rotation. If he's single and's on his own, he needs to be having a steady rotation, okay, until he finds somebody that he wants, okay? Or he might just choose the monk life. But if he wants to choose the monk life, then he'd say no to Carrie when she said that she wanted to, uh, you know, to go out. And he didn't. He accepted, so which means that he's still dating. Okay. Okay, so that happens. Uh, could really, you know, could really be yourself around. Because Carrie feels very comfortable around like that. She's had sex with him plenty of times in the past. So she knows how to act around him. You know, they have good sex together. They have good body chemistry. You know, motion in the ocean is all good. So she's like, what the hell? I'm not, I'm not seeing anyone right now. You know, I don't want to be alone tonight. Let's, let's just do it. Okay. And he knows that too, you know. And he's okay with it. Which most guys are really. I mean, you know, we're okay with it. Okay. It, it's, you know, it's just that. You know, the people that want more, you know, from a guy's point of view, okay, this guy, John, is not dating Carrie seriously, 
okay, because he doesn't want to. And that's the truth. He doesn't want to date her seriously. He doesn't want her to, be, to ever be his girlfriend, okay? He is, to her, to him, he, she's just a fuck. That's all she is. That's all she's ever going to be to him. Okay, it's just a fuck, okay? And maybe on some subconscious level, Carrie knows it too. Although in this episode, she's going to try to get more from him than just that. She's going to try to see, well, what happens if I really just date him, like for real, instead of just fucking him, you know? Uh, they're going to find out they have no chemistry. But I think he already knows that. He already knows that she's just a fuck, and I really don't care about her. I don't care about her life. I don't care about what she's doing or about her job, her friends, her relationships. I don't care. You know, she's just someone I, I fuck whenever I feel like it, you know? And, and that, that's all he wants from her, you know? The episode doesn't say that, but I'm saying that from a straight guy's point of view. That's what I think. He doesn't really give two shits about Carrie. She's just an easy lay, you know? And she's it's convenient, and she's available. So why not, you know? Uh, so, uh, so Samantha's like, you can't date your fuck buddy, you know, which is what I just said. Like Carrie's like, well, he's he's on call. <laughs> you don't need to know. <laughs> I think Charlotte says, what the fuck, buddy? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like Charlotte doesn't know what a fuck buddy is, okay? He's always on call, okay? He does. You don't need to know about his life. <laughs> True. True. That's basically what I just said about, about John. So Charlotte's like, you know, maybe I should start asking out guys instead of just letting guys ask me out, which is a good, good idea, you know? I mean... Put yourself in the driver's seat. See what it's like for us for a change, ladies. See what it's like for us, okay? I want to see your face when a guy tells you, oh, you know, I think you're really pretty, but, you know, it's just, you know, I'm just like, right now I'm really busy with my job and stuff. I don't really have time to date, but thank you for giving me your number, you know. Maybe I'll call you sometime, you know. Uh, you know, I want to see your face when that fucking happens, okay? Let's see how you handle rejection. Yeah, wouldn't that be something? I'd love to see that show. You know, because that's what happens to us all the fucking time. But it's our job to make the first move. You sure, you girls sure as fuck aren't going to do it. You know, the only time girls make the first move, the only time they ever make the first move is when it's a popular guy. Okay, when it's a guy that all the other girls are trying to make the move on too. You know, if you got like seven girls all hitting on one guy, you're going to be the eighth one. But the guy on the corner, oh, fuck no, I ain't going to talk to him. Uh, it's, he's a man, he needs to talk to me. You see what I mean? Fucking bullshit. Y'all go after the guy that, that, that you're not going to get, but you're going to fucking expect the guy that's by himself to fucking come up to you and make the first move. Like, this is fucking stupid. My God. Women are just, uh. You no, know, we're not all women. Oh, yeah, they are. And we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> I love women. Okay. All right. So, uh, Charlotte asked the guy out. So, she asked the guy out, like, you know, I guess from his yo her yoga class. <laughs> I already told you what guys in yoga classes are there for, okay? They're not there to do yoga. All right. Uh, Carrie goes on a date with John, finally, her fuck buddy. And, of course, he wants to fuck. Uh, they don't really go on a date. Like, he shows up there, you know, and uh, she's there. She's about to open a bottle, and they just go straight to the bedroom, you know. Um, or, or do they? Oh, no, no, no. He actually shows up. And she's like, okay, well, let's go to dinner. And he's like, okay. And he starts taking his clothes off. And she's like, no, no, no. I meant, like, we're going. He's like, you mean, you mean dinner, dinner? And she's like, yes, I made reservations. Like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I thought <laughs> every time, you know, you want to go out to dinner, it doesn't mean dinner. <laughs> she's like, no, I really want to go to real dinner, like, like, like on a date. So he's, like, shocked by it. He's like, okay, well, I guess we're going on a date. So they go on a date. Okay. Um. They're talking about stupid stuff, you know, like he can't handle sushi. She, she made a, a reservation. Of sushi. He can't handle sushi. He doesn't like raw food, you know, you know, like me. He doesn't like raw food. <laughs> she gives her sushi. <laughs> so she tries to make some small talk with this guy. They have nothing in common. You know, she's like, well, we can go somewhere else if you don't. He's like, no, it's okay. You know, if I don't like the food, I'll just go get a burger on the way home. No big deal. She's like, okay, well, uh, so uh, what do you, uh, so, so how's your job? <laughs> He's like, oh, you know. It's, it's good, you know. I sell time. I sell minutes. You know, if you switch over to MCI, I can get you two free hours on your phone plan. <laughs> She's just not. Now, I got to be honest with you, okay? I did skip the part. She already had sex with him earlier, okay? She had sex with him earlier in this episode, all right? So they're actually on a date now. He thought that he was going to have sex with her again. But instead, they're on a date. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, so because this is her in-between relationship pattern that she has, okay? It's easy and uncomplicated, okay? And maybe it can work. So anyway, so they're talking. They have nothing in common. They have no chemistry, okay? You ever watch a movie uh, where uh, 
like, like the only one I can think of right now is Star Wars, <laughs> where Anakin and Padme, you know, um, Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman, they played Anakin Skywalker and Padme. I'm not, well, they're, they're, supposed to have, they're supposed to fall in love with each other before they get married. It's just like, there's no chemistry. Like, they look like they're both acting. Okay. Like, there's like, you cannot see them together. Okay. Now, recently, uh, last night, in fact, I went to go see the new Batman movie. Okay. And in that movie, uh, Robert Pattinson uh, plays Batman and Zoe Kravitz plays uh, Catwoman. Okay. And they've got tremendous chemistry. I mean, you could, you could see the electricity when they're in the room together. When they're in a scene together, you can see the way they're looking at each other. You know, they're not looking at each other like two actors, okay? They're looking at each other like two lovers, okay? Because apparently he actually got her pregnant while making this movie. Yeah, she had to divorce her husband. Yes, that happened, okay? So that was some real, that was some 3D acting right there, okay? Uh, but, <laughs> but, yeah. So, um, yeah, so they have no chemistry at all. Okay, they, they look like they're both just sitting there trying to talk to each other. They have, they have nothing interesting to say, you know, to each other. Nothing that 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 uh, excites the other part, the other person. So they're just like, yeah, okay, like twiddling their thumbs. Like, okay, can we get back to having sex now? Because this is boring. <laughs> and yes, I've been on dates like that too. You know, uh, you know, she, there's a reason she, he's your fuck buddy, Carrie. Okay, there's a reason. There's a reason he doesn't want to be in a relationship with you too. And it's not because he's a dog, although he might be. You know, he might be just a player. Um, I think he is a player, honestly. Um, the way he acts, you know, like, you know, the way it's so normal for him to say, like, oh, you really just wanted dinner? I thought, because every time, you know, okay, you know. Like, he's so used to having his way. So, for anyone to change his pattern of just sleeping with women is like, oh, oh, you actually want to go out to dinner? Oh, oh, okay, damn. We're actually going to go out to eat? Mm, I didn't see that coming, you know. He's so used to just going straight for the sex. So, he has nothing in common with her. She has nothing in common with him. And by the end of the date, she realizes that she's never going to see this guy again. She, she's, she's gone beyond that. You know, like, like I said before earlier, you know, with, with the fuck buddy, it can only last for so long. Eventually, one person or the other person is going to want something more, you know, or they're both going to realize they don't want each other. You know, they want something real, you know. So, um, you know, that, that's the problem. There's a reason they're your fuck buddy, okay? It's because you can't really see yourself in a relationship with them, you know. And I've been there too, you know, and I'm sure women out there, you've been there too, you know. Uh, where I've dated people, had sex with people, but just, you know, it's not going to go anywhere, you know? But, you know, hey, you kept their phone number, they're still around, you know? Whatever. Okay, meanwhile, um, Samantha's been getting off, you know, so she finally decides that she wants to fuck uh, her neighbors. Uh, she asks the, the cleaning guy who's Mexican, doesn't speak any English, you're like, hey, what are they like? You, you see, are my neighbors there? You know, what do they do? Who, are they married? Are they nice couple? Are they attractive? He, he, musician, and she a dancer. Yeah, 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 they're de bueno. Muy bueno, yeah. Like, he doesn't fucking understand what he's saying, you know. So she's all excited. Uh, they slip a note to her saying that, hey, you know, because uh, they can hear her moaning too with her vibrator. So they slip her a note like, hey, next time you hear us, why don't you just come on over and join us, right? So she's all excited. Oh, my God, a dancer and a musician. I'm going to have some three-way sex. Oh, God, I, can, I know they're doing it good because I can hear them. Oh, my God, I'm going to be part of it. So she gets excited, and she puts on this sexy lingerie and this stupid little scarf, and she walks over there in her heels and her, you know, her stilettos and her heel and her, you know, her, uh, you know, her lingerie, you know. And she opens the door, and just like this two, this fat couple is there. <laughs> Uh, this unattractive old couple. <laughs> and she's like, uh, uh, yeah, I just came to tell you to, can you please keep the noise down? I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> she leaves. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know what? There's a fantasy and then there's reality. Okay. <laughs> like, it's like phone. I've never done phone sex, but from what I understand, you know, the, the voice is very sexy. Having a sexy voice does not mean you have a sexy body. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, so Samantha gets a little dose of that. Like, hey, you know what? <laughs> not, not everybody's pretty, okay? <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's, it's sexist. It is. It's, it's, just like, it's, putting, it's putting what someone looks like over who they are. But, hey, man, it's a TV show. This is, what, this is what they do. This is what we do. This is what we all do this stuff, okay? So she gets the fuck out of there, all right? Uh, yeah, Samantha was smoking weed, by the way. Okay, so the girls talk about all the dates uh, she's been making. Uh, Samantha, you're, Samantha, tell, okay, uh, Charlotte's talking about all the dates she's been making with all these guys. And Samantha's like, you're turning into a man. No, she's not fucking turning into a man. Oh, my God. Unless she's paying for it. If she's paying for the dates, yes, then Charlotte's officially a man. If she's paying for these fucking dates that she's making. If the guy's paying, which we find out later on that he is, then she's not a fucking man. Okay? Let her fucking pay for the date. Then she can be a man. 
Let her affect her wallet for a change. You don't ask out somebody and then not pay for it. Are you out of your fucking mind? When a woman asks me out, I know, that tells me she's paying for it. When I ask a woman out, that means I'm paying for it. That's how it works. That's, that's Western society, cultural dating, social norms. Anyway, so she gets busted. Um, she goes out with one guy, she has a really good time with him. He pays for the date, but she makes an excuse to leave early because she got to go date another guy like later that night. So she tells her that she's sick. He drops her off at her place. She immediately goes out with the other guy. They have a good time. They come back to her apartment and they start kissing outside of the apartment. Meanwhile, her first date's walking out of her apartment and he sees, he's like, what, Charlotte, I thought you were sick. And she's making out with this other guy. He's like, I thought you like, I came back to bring you some soup. You told me you were sick. Oh yeah, yeah, you look really sick now. And she's like, oh, blah, blah. And then the other guy's like, what, 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 you mean you went out with her earlier today? He's like, yeah, I had the earlier, you're the lucky one. You get the late shift, you get to take her upstairs. You know, and, and he's like, I'm leaving. And he's like, hey, uh, which direction you go? I'm going this way. Well, I'm going to go with you. You know, because she double booked. Which, hey, as a guy, I've done that before too. It sucks. So now, now Charlotte really, oh my God, it pisses off people when you lie to them so you can fuck some, so you can be with somebody else. You know, you go on a date with them. Now, there's nothing wrong with actually with doing this. Okay. Like she didn't promise these guys anything. Okay. There's like, really nothing wrong with what she did here. She's not in a relationship with either one of these guys. She's not cheating on anybody. Okay, she dated one guy that she didn't know how the date was going to go. And then she also booked a date later on that same night with another guy. Okay, the problem was that they found out about each other. She should have done a much better job by keeping it separate. But she's, she's new to this thing, so she didn't know what she was doing. It's a rookie mistake. Okay, but I wouldn't give up on it. Okay, if you want to find someone who's good for you, you've got to improve your odds. And the only way to improve your odds is to date more people. Not sleep with more people, date more people. Okay, because, you know, because it's a... It, for a long-term relationship, okay, how the date goes is, is a better factor on how a relationship with this person would go, okay? Anything bad about a person, you know, you can weed out a lot of people on the first date, okay? So anyway, so there's nothing wrong with what she did. She just got caught. So she decides she's not going to do it again. All right. So that happens. Uh, Kevin makes a, Kevin, uh, the, 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 the guy Miranda's been seeing, the asshole, he finally makes a partner and they decide to celebrate. Yeah, she's sitting there with him and uh, they're opening a bottle of champagne. He complains about the champagne. Oh my God, this fucking, you're going to tell me this $100 bottle of champagne is as good as the fucking $10 shit they sell at the star? You can't fucking convince me that is fucking bullshit. She's like, hey, relax. You know, you should be happy. You made partner. He's like, yeah, now I got to work fucking an extra 15 fucking hours for less pay, okay? That's supposed to make me happy, huh? Is that what you think is going to make me happy? And she, she's finally like, okay, fuck you. I'm out of here. I'm tired of you talking this way. Well, she didn't say that, but that's how she feels. So she gets the fuck up and she's like, you know what? Don't ever fucking call me again. You know? Because she just got tired of it. He's an asshole. He's a fucking asshole. He is. He's a total fucking asshole. The way he talks to people, the way he talks to her. You know, I don't like her. And he, I wouldn't talk to her that way. You know? He's like, you know, fucking total asshole. She walks out on him. She says, fuck this, you know. I'm, I'm wonderful now. Thank Now that, you know, he, she, she walks out and he says, don't piss me off. He's like, he tells her, don't piss me off. And she gets the fuck up out of there. And she's like, never call me again. And she leaves. She's walking away. And who does she run into when she's walking away? She runs into Skipper. Skipper's walking there by himself, moping around. I can't find love. No girl wants my penis. And she's like, Skipper, oh my God, is that you over there? Oh, you look better. You've been working out. I love your hair. Oh, don't run away from me. Come back here. And he's like, what? Miranda, oh my God, get away from me. My life is wonderful now that you're not in it. Don't follow me. She's like, no, Skipper, come back. You look great. How have you been? Let's catch up. She's just like chasing him down. It's just, it's just pathetic. Pathetic. And Skipper's just crying over here, you know. And she tries to chase him. It just goes to show you the, the social dynamics here. Anyway. Well, so that's pretty much how the episode ends. Uh, Carrie uh, says, like, sex, you know, for women is easy. 